<laughs> In this day and age, there are a multitude of war games, miniature companies, and 3D print startups popping up just about every day. It's kind of amazing. I remember when I first started getting into the hobby and painting miniatures, the main options that I was aware of was 40k and Age of Sigmar. Not that there weren't alternatives, but miniature painting wasn't nearly as popular as it is now. And as a result, GW kinda rolled with an iron fist. Now they're still on top, but the cracks are certainly forming. I love Warhammer, I don't love it any less than I did back then, and I think it's safe to say that this channel is effectively a Warhammer painting channel over an all-around miniature painting channel. But today, I want to break that mold, as a new war game has completely stolen my heart. Quor. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell is Quor? Hell, that's exactly what I said when I discovered it about a month ago. Quor is a war game that was developed by Zombie Smith Studios in 2009, so calling it new is definitely a stretch. Also, for some reason, it has a weird PSVR game that was developed by Steel Wool Studios. You know, the guys that made Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach? The setting of Quor takes place in the world of Allwide, a place relatively similar to our home. Well, yours, not mine. The inhabitants of Allwide are the Quor. They're simple folk, no notable supernatural powers or abilities. They're farmers, merchants, and people just trying to get by. Their species resemble reptile-like aardvarks, reaching heights just under one and a half meters or five feet. They're honestly pretty relatable. They just want to live their lives, harvest bugs, grow their crops, and watch their children grow. But like us, the Quar have seemingly always been at war. Ever since they began forging their first tools, mud huts, and societies, they would do everything in their power to defend what was theirs. In the Quar's native tongue, all wide means home, the most important thing to a Quar. They'll get into spats over just about anything, but what they truly want is to gorge on moth cakes and just work hard. But there are other Quar, the kind that think a warm bed and full belly aren't enough. The core that scheme, that connive. And their machinations bring whole nations and kingdoms into conflict. Constant conflict. Brutal conflict. For the history of all wide is written in blood. This is Quor. Now, the modern rendition of Quor is produced by War Games Atlantic. The current fluff is a little different from the older editions, but everything you need to know is that we have two main factions, the Crusaders and the Cocturans. The Crusaders believe that unless the first families are stripped of their power, they will have no reason to change the current state of affairs and the Long War will just continue. As you can probably guess, core society is run heavily in class-based affairs. The ideology and political movement of the Crusade itself is based on the premise that the Long War is inevitable as a result of the Stratus factions of the Core Society. Now, the Long War is basically the entire war of the world of Allwide. It's been going on for centuries off and on, and it's kind of understandable why they feel it's inevitable. The Crusader army itself is legendary for its military success, and it's because of its high degree of standardization. They're definitely the scrappier side, and they have more men, but their gear and weapons are definitely on the lower end side of fancy. On the other side, we have the Kofdurans. They're steeped in rich martial tradition and dedicated to preserving the traditional core society. Their weapons and uniforms are much more finely crafted. Everything hand-stitched, their helms and chest plates polished. To take pride in their appearance and aura is as integral to a Kofdurin as their prowess in combat. Their weapon is not merely a tool of war, it's a piece of art. The Kofdurans see themselves as the last bastion of traditional civilization. They are effectively the oldest single government kingdom in Allwide. Many other continents and nations have been conquered, partitioned, and otherwise subjected to the rule of another, but never Kofdur. Now that you have a basic rundown on the two sides, let's talk about the war game. Earlier this year, the newest edition of Quar was released in plastic. The older miniatures are still available for purchase, but they're all metal. Not that there's anything wrong with that, these look amazing. Now, the new box set comes with rules, miniatures, and a little lore book. If you want, all the rules are free online. The miniatures that come with the box are 12 Kofdurans and 12 Crusaders. A typical core squad only requires 10 cores, so you basically get two extra for each side. Alternatively, if you just want to get the rules and you don't really care about the handbook inside, 
you could just order the box sets that contain 24 miniatures in a pack and they're 40 bucks a piece. Yeah, you heard me, 40 bucks for 24 miniatures. Granted, they're not as detailed as GW minis, but 24 for 40 rather than 45 for 5? I think that's pretty damn reasonable. And there's no reason you can't kit bash these guys to be weird ab humans. Haha, <laughs> hint hint, that's what I'm doing with these guys. But without spoiling too much for later videos, I really do like how these miniatures look. I really like the art style they're going for with the new plastic line. It's quite faithful to the watercolor designs that they have for most of the box art and promotional images. Now what I love about these sprues is that they contain three core from each side. You have more than enough bits to fit your needs, Tons of extra guns, little accessories, fun little bits to kit bash and play around with. I love that the Kofti side comes with a little satchel full of baguettes. Now a thing to note, one negative side of these models is Tamiya cement does not work as well with them. They're a different kind of plastic. So I primarily use super glue for these guys. You could use Tamiya, it just doesn't work as well. The biggest reason I like these models is that they're just the right amount of detail. They're very crisp in their design, but they leave a lot to your own imagination. A lot of modern 40k models are just a little too detailed for my taste, and what I really like about these little dudes is that they really enable you to fill in the blanks using your brush. If you haven't noticed, these guys have all sorts of colors to pick from. As you can see, I've relatively stuck to the main color scheme, only differing somewhere on the helmets and some of the fatigues. But when it comes to the skin tones, I've been really going hog wild. I like it especially because the Crusader squads operate in groups of three. I've been picking three different colors and pairing them together. And while some people may not like this, one thing I really like about the new expansion boxes is that they're all in cast resin. They're really high quality detail, but it just gives me that little boost of nostalgia of when I first got into Warhammer. Unfortunately, Games Workshop is killing all their resin miniatures, but this really brings me back. While not everybody shares this sentiment, it always felt really special whenever I got a resin mini. And speaking of resin, these guys actually have 3D print plans on their website. Another cool thing I want to mention about the box set is, you probably noticed earlier, but yes, it does have built-in terrain. I don't think I've ever actually seen somebody do this before. It's kind of adorable. Now, what you probably are thinking off the top of your head is this really does seem reminiscent to Turn Up 28. And that's another thing why I like these miniatures. I think they're super universal in their design. You can kind of apply them to just about anything and make them stand-ins for 40k, turn up 28, probably bolt action? I don't know, I don't really play bolt action. Now, this is still a very early development. The core team is relatively small, and that's another reason why I'm doing this video. There's actually a smaller version of core, this being the 15mm edition. This edition actually features vehicles, and that's something I'm really, really hoping to see in the 28mm edition. The buzz for this game has been kind of quiet, and I don't really like to see that. This is the first time in a long time that I've really felt excited for a war game. In fact, I'm actually learning how to play the game before I've ever learned how to play Kill Team, which is very ironic. But slight passionate tangent aside, I really do want to go into how the game is actually played. So the game itself is relatively similar to Kill Team in terms of its size, though this is relative to how many miniatures you wish to have. Now I won't really break down the rules, but I want to give you a general idea on how the game is played just to give you a little taste. I mean, that's kind of the point of this video. The World War I-like setting and reality of the situation is very similar to how the game plays. There's elements of luck involved, good strategy, and there's a lot of little elements involving your actual miniatures. What I'm trying to say is this game is super fluff friendly. If you're really into the your dude side of wargaming, this is the game for you. One of your core might get really injured, and he might need some of his buddies to help save him. But think to yourself, expending that extra manpower to save one core's life over the main objective might result in defeat. Ew. Another thing that really sets this game aside is that they're all the same race. Sure, they have different cultures and weapons, but they're all core. In a lot of ways, it kind of humanizes the game for me. And while I'm sure this sentiment won't be shared with everyone, I feel like in this way it kind of has an advantage over 40k when it comes to the your dudes element. You feel for these guys, they're cute little dudes. They're not all bad guys, they're soldiers, they're fighting a war that they don't really understand. In 40k, the closest thing we have is the Imperial Guard, and I think they're actually a pretty close comparison. We can sympathize with Space Marines because they are human to some degree, but at the end of the day they're dogmatic zealots. And I don't really think I could empathize much with the Necron but I think it might be best if I stop with the 40k comparisons. Because when it really comes down to it, there is nothing like Quar. 
It's its own thing. It's a breath of fresh air. And I think for a lot of us, it's been hiding under our noses this whole time. So please, if you enjoyed this video, please, please, please give Quora a chance. They're a small team, and I really want to see what these guys can do if they had a bigger budget. And hey, tell a friend about it too. I recently went to my hobby store to see if they actually had any Quora miniatures, and they didn't. But I convinced a couple to look it up while I was there, and they said it was really cool. And they're right, hell yeah, it's cool. And something I really do want to mention for all my main audience. Don't worry, I'm still going to be doing plenty of 40k content, but you can probably expect a Quora video once per month. Only exception being is you're getting two Quora videos today. If you haven't seen the second one already, I did an entire video dedicated to painting the main two factions. Figured with this video being more of an introduction, I'd save the painting for a second video. But hey, I think I've flat my beak enough for one video. I just want to give a huge shout out to my friend Meaty. He did some excellent illustrations for this video, and you can plan on seeing some more from him later. And with that, I've definitely flat my beak enough for one video. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you liked what you saw, share it with a friend, and remember to mishmash, kitbash, and paint some fantastic miniatures. And you're gonna. I promise. See ya.